times hello everyone and welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to do a video in which i'm answering all of your questions about my reading i asked for you guys on twitter and on instagram to ask me any question you might have about my reading habits and i have ended up with a bunch of questions that i am now very happy to answer i will try and get to most of these questions but i don't promise that i will get to all of them just because i don't want for this video to turn way too long so now that that is set let me just get started i have all of your wonderful questions on my iphone i guess let's just get started on the very first one which is are you a moody reader yes i am and that's the reason why i can never seem to stick to a tbr i like the idea of tbrs but i am such a moody reader so that a few days later i will not be in the mood for those books i want to read whatever i'm in the mood for and while i'm reading a book i already then know what i'm in the mood for next so i'm very moody and i like it that way because that makes me sure to always read whatever i want to read and i like that feeling when i read several books at a time do i read a certain number of chapters in each i like occasionally to read two or three books at a time i don't have a certain number of chapters or pages i want to read in each book before I switch to the next one. I just read according to my mood once again. If I want to read a hundred pages in one book, in one stretch, that's what I'm going to do. If I want to complete the book, that's what I'm going to do. But sometimes I also like to alternate between two books very often for some reason. So as with the first question, it depends on my mood. For how long stretches of time do you read? I read for about half an hour sometimes more sometimes less i used to be able to read maybe one hour in one stretch but i can't do that anymore i become restless and i need to just walk around for a little bit feed my cat make myself a cup of coffee something watch a booktube video because that helps me clear my mind a little bit and think about what I just read. And then after a few minutes, I'm perfectly fine to go back to my book and continue reading. But I do need that tiny break in between reading. How do I select my next reads? Well, that's a good question. I know that some people are struggling with that. But I don't find that I'm one of those people just because I always know what I'm in the mood for. As I said earlier, when I'm reading a book, I already know and I already think about what books I want to read next. Which is not always a good thing because I would like to be able to just focus on my current read and savor it as much as I can. But I just can't help it. I have so many books I want to get to and I kind of like thinking about those books and figuring out what I'm in the mood for next. So I often know exactly what I want to pick up next. For instance, I think I'm going to pick up a new book today and I know exactly what that one is going to be and Tyler's newest book called Clock Dance. So I think I'm going to get that one on my Kindle and start reading. Do you ever DNF books? Yes, I do. If you watch my channel, you know that that happens occasionally. I have an example, I'm currently reading this novel, Titans by Leela Meacham. I haven't decided to DNF it quite yet, but I'm pretty close to it just because even though I am more than halfway through it, I'm bored and I find this book to be very predictable and the more I read in it, the more frustrated I become. And I don't want to feel that way when relaxing and reading. So whenever I feel like that reading a book, I often DNF it. Reading is my hobby and it should be pleasurable to do. I will say I am reading a lot each year so that means I do stumble across more books than the average person I think that I decide to DNF. I don't know if I'm correct about that but I do think that the more you read the more books you will encounter that are not really books for you and that's perfectly fine. How do you get out of a reading slump? I often find myself in some kind of a reading slump 
at least I have been this past year for some reason. I think it's because I have been reading a lot these past years and I feel a slight slump coming now and again. So what I do is that I take a break. I sometimes take a break of one or two days in which I don't read because I don't feel like reading. And I know that after one or two days, I will feel the urge to read again because it's such a big part of my life that if I don't read, I don't feel like myself. Another thing I like to do if I feel like I'm in a slump and I keep picking up books I don't like, I return to my favorites and I reread those and that always puts me in the mood for new reads and more reading. But I do think it's very important to take those breaks once in a while because that's a way to step back a little bit and reflect on all the books you've read recently and just take a break before you inhale even more books. My favorite places and times to read well, right now I'm currently in the middle of my summer vacation, so I read all the time whenever I feel like it. In the middle of the night, in the morning, in the afternoon, whenever I have time for it. I can't obviously do that during the weekdays when I have my work. So, I like to read at night, definitely. Evenings are my favorite times to read. Also in the morning, before I go to work, if I have half an hour before I have to leave, that is the perfect time to sit down with my coffee and read for a little bit. I find that that's a great start to the day. And then where do I read? I read in my couch, I read in my office, in which I have my comfy chair, and I also read in my bed at night and in the morning. I also naturally read on the train or in the bus or in the car. It depends on where I am. But I do find that my attention becomes less focused when I read in public. I'm better at reading at home when it's quiet and nice. Are you or have you ever been in a book club? No, unfortunately, I haven't been in one and I am not currently in one. As I said, I'm much of a moody reader and I'm not sure that, that a book club is something for me because I most likely will not be in the mood for that book that we're reading. But I do love the idea of a book club, definitely. Do you have access to e-library apps? Yeah, we do have an e-library app here in Denmark, but I find that the selection of books is not at all as grand as it is, for instance, in the United States, because the books on the app are in Danish and not all books I want to read have been published in Danish and not all of them have been published as e-books that you can borrow from the library. So I used to use it a little bit some years ago, but I don't really anymore. If I read ebooks, I use my Kindle now. What is the ratio of books written in Danish, English, other on your shelves? I have books in three languages, Danish, English and French. And French is probably the bunch that is the smallest. I have all of my French books in my office and I think there are about 20 fiction French books in there. Danish books, I do have a few scattered around on my shelves. I don't know how many, but the majority of my book collection is definitely in English. They are cheaper. It's a way to practice my language when I read in English. And I just like being able to talk about the books in the language I have read them. So the majority, I would say maybe 90% of my book collection is in English, which I'm fine with. How much do you read a day? Once again, this is my summer vacation, so I read a lot more these days. I don't have a certain amount of time because for me, it's very important to only read when I feel like reading. So some days I will read for maybe 30 minutes and that's it. Other days I will read for hours and hours. Maybe I'm in the middle of a book that has grabbed my attention or I just can't get enough of reading. Sometimes I'm inspired to read, through watching booktube videos. Sometimes I just need to relax my mind and not think about anything but the book and the world I am reading about. So it, it varies a lot, but I read almost every day, at least a little bit. Do you set expectations for yourself to read so much a day? That kind of touches upon what I just answered, that no, I read what I want to read whenever I want to read. And I think it's so important to not push myself to read just because I want to have a lot of books read to do a video. I used to do that some years ago, but I find that that strangles my love for reading and I don't want to end up burned out and not wanting to pick up a book ever again. 
which I don't think is ever going to happen to be honest but I have let myself take a step back this year and not read as much as I used to and I'm quite enjoying it. I'm enjoying my books more and I'm enjoying be being able to save them and not read them for the sake of reading them but reading them for the sake of learning things and thinking about the book I'm reading. Suits has just entered the building in case you can hear some noises. Hi Suits. Um, Siri, no, please go. <laughs> Can you stop reading in the middle of a chapter or do you prefer waiting until the end of the chapter? I prefer waiting. I hate it when I'm in the middle of a chapter and I have to go. But sometimes that is the case. And then what I do is that I read until the upper left corner of a page. And then I know that the next time I pick up the book, I will remember that that's where I stopped. But I do prefer to stop at a natural break at the end of a chapter or sometimes there is a pause between paragraphs that's my preference definitely because sometimes it takes hours before you get back to your book and if you're in the middle of a dialogue it's it's hard and it's awkward to get back into that a few hours later how do you decide which books to buy hmm it's a very hard decision because sometimes i get books on my kindle and that's most probably books that I either have to read right now or books that I don't need to own but most of the books I read I want to have in physical format because they are easier to read for me they are a better way to read I like to have the book in my hands and also sometimes the books I read or decide to read are beautiful and then I want them in my collection for instance there is this book The Puppy War which is very well known these days here on booktube i really want to read it but i am contemplating getting it on my kindle so that i can read it right away or getting the physical format but that will mean that i will have to wait 10 12 days before i actually get to have the book and read it so i don't know what to do but that's kind of an answer to that question i hope do you have a budget for book buying that's a really good question one that i have never addressed on this channel i don't have a budget and that's because reading is my main love my main hobby since i can afford it i have decided to let books be my open goal i don't know how to explain it i don't spend a lot of money on clothes and makeup and other things the thing i spend the most money on is books and as long as i still have money for living and for soups <laughs> then i'm perfectly fine with spending more money on books than on other things okay siri please can you please just go away do you annotate your books i tried doing that a year ago but I didn't like it because I didn't like stopping up in the middle of my reading to write something down or to put in a post-it. I found that it broke up my reading in a way I didn't like. And also I didn't like going back to that book and having something written in it. If I reread a book, I want to experience it again as a new book without also reading my former thoughts on the book. So I don't annotate books. How do you deal with books you don't like? I don't read them. I don't. I really just, I'm okay with DNFing it and giving it to another person who might enjoy it more. I think that life is too short to spend hours and hours reading a book that you are not really liking. Do you declutter? Yes, I often do unhauls in which I pick up all the books that I either didn't like or have no interest in reading anymore and I give them to charity or to friends. I don't do unhaul videos very often because I find that they are uninspiring. I don't like watching them myself, but I do maybe include some of the books I get rid of in a reading blog. How quickly do you read? I don't know. Quickly? I don't know. People tell me that I'm a quick reader, but I've never actually counted how many pages I read in an hour. It depends on the book, obviously. I think that I read faster in Danish than in English and in French definitely but I have gotten so used to reading books in English now that I'm pretty quick in reading those books as well. I'm not trying to brag here, I'm just 
trying to explain how fast I read. I hope that was answer enough. Five books to take with me if I, if I stranded on an island. Well, that's a question I actually got once in a job interview. I would take The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. What else? A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I think this is hard. Maybe a classic that is very old. Maybe Jane Eyre by Jean Austen. Jean Austen by Charlotte Bronte. And let me see. Uh, this is a hard question. Really hard. I think that... I think I might... I don't know. I can't choose between my darlings. This is too hard of a question. I think I will save this question for maybe another video and then really get into those books I would bring with me because I can't do it now. How do you determine which books you keep in your collection? That's another very great question. I don't know. I mean, yes, I do know. I never keep the books that I didn't like because I know how heavy books are and how much space they take up and I don't want to move with a thousand books in my collection. I like to have my core collection, which is the books that I absolutely loved or that I haven't read yet or that I just want to keep because it's one that I want to reread. So that's kind of the way I decide what books to keep and what books to not keep. Where do you look to find new books you would like to read? Booktube is my main area to go when I need inspiration and I think that's it basically. I also have some friends of mine who sometimes recommend books to me but booktube is definitely my main area to go when I need inspiration and it seems like I keep adding books to my TBR so booktube is enough for me to find inspiration. I never get through all the books I actually add on my TBR and decide to read. Have you ever thought about writing a book? I have thought about it, but I'm not going to do it because I don't enjoy writing. I've always said that I'm a reader, not a writer. I hated doing written assignments as, an, as a student myself. And whenever I sit down to create a story, my brain goes completely blank because I don't have the gene of writing, I think, and I don't have the gene of creativity. So, I'm not a writer, I'm a reader, and I'm happy to let it stay that way. Have you always read multiple books at one time? No, that's something I started doing when I started this channel. Earlier, I read one book at a time, and I didn't have a lot of books on my TBR that I wanted to read, so I just stuck with one book at a time. But as I said earlier, now I am fine with reading two or three books at a time, because it makes for a variety, it makes for a great selection that you can choose from according to your mood. Can you recommend us a Danish romantic novel? Hmm... That's the thing. I am not very good at recommending Danish authors because I don't read a lot of them. Even though I'm from Denmark, I find that the majority of my reading is in English and by foreign authors for some reason. I do know that there is one book which is not a romantic novel, unfortunately, but it's called Herberg by Tom Christensen, which is pretty well known. And I'm pretty sure it's been translated into English. That's one that made an impact on me because it's very brutal and also very fascinating to read about this man who is a book reviewer and he slowly becomes an alcoholic and it's a book about how that deteriorates his life and his relationship to his family. That's one book that's from Denmark and that I really like. Literary fiction recommendation to someone who is new to the genre. Ooh, you know I love my literary fiction, but I find it hard to find that book that would be the perfect intro to that genre. So, I don't know. I think that Haruki Murakami, I don't know if he's literary fiction, he's more of magical realism, but I think he's a great place to start just because his books are very simple and they are easy to read and follow, but at the same time they have this perfect layer and depth to them that makes you realize that it's about much more than you thought to begin with. Do you read poetry? No, I don't, unfortunately. It's not something that interests me too much 
and it's not something I want to read for pleasure. Not yet, at least. Have you always loved to read? Yes, I think I have. I remember reading when I was a child and when I was a teenager as well. But as I said, I have read a lot more these past five years in which I've had this channel. And that's great, I think. Is your family full of readers? I, th I think so, yeah. I mean, my mother and father both read. My sister reads a little bit, but not too much. And then my grandmother on my mother's side of the family, she read a lot as well. It differs from family member to family member, but I would consider my family a family of readers. We all love a good book and we all enjoy reading. You read in three languages. Do you have a preference? I think, even though it sounds weird, my preference is English, but I obviously love reading in Danish as well, but I just, I mean, my preference actually is to read a book in its original language. That's definitely my preference. So if I'm reading a book from a Danish author, I'm going to read it in Danish. The same goes for English books and French books. So I guess that's my answer to that question. We are almost at the end. All time favorite books in the horror genre. Hmm, I did recently a video about the horror books that are on my TBR, but I didn't talk about my favorite horror books. I think one horror book that I really like is not maybe really a complete horror, but that's The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. That one is just so macabre and mysterious and I love it for that. So definitely look into that book and then there are so many others. I like. I kind of like The Myth of Dracula, but I didn't really love the book Dracula by Bram Stoker. I've never actually read the complete book because I keep getting bored with myself reading it, but I love The Myth of Dracula, so anything that's related to him, I love. I did do a video about this actually some years ago that I will link down below if I remember. Do you prefer to keep your books in perfect condition while reading? I mean, I like for my books to look good all the time, also after I've read them, but I also like the look of a book that you can see have been read and loved. So I don't mind a broken spine, but I tend to not break my spines when I read. I don't know how I do it. People keep telling me it's impressing, but it's something I've always done. I don't break my books. I just read them carefully without thinking about it. I like beautiful books, what can I say? Which booktuber that you follow would you recommend? Ooh, that's a good question. And I have to settle on one. Hmm, if you like my channel, I think that you will also love Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings. She is one of my biggest inspirations, even though she's also struggling a little bit with her reading these days and enjoying her reading. I find that she has so many intelligent things to say about the books that she's reading and her content on her channel is just so intriguing to me that she's definitely one of my favorites. And I also like how I can write to her and ask her if I have struggled with my reading and need some help with that. Because I know Mercedes is going through that herself and she's actually been a huge help to me in the past. So that's one channel I would recommend, but I can't tell you about other booktubers that I love if you want a video about that someday. And the very last question is, what is the book that got you hooked on reading? That's a difficult question because that means Siri once again, please go away. Anyway, as I was saying, that means you will have to remember the book from your childhood that got you into reading. The only book I remember is one called Hudemore. I think I've mentioned this one before on my channel. It's basically translated into Cottage Mum in English and I don't have that book anymore. I haven't read it for ages and ages but back when I was a child I read it several times and I remember that it's about this group of children during summer who, who visit Hudemore and she helps them put bandage on their bruises and give them delicious treats etc. So it was just a nice read and one that I remember fondly and I think that might be one of the books that got me into reading. That's Zeus. <laughs> now Zeus wants to play so I have to leave now but that is perfect because I think I made it to most of your questions and I think that 
this video is too long now so i'm going to stop here but thank you so so much for taking the time to asking me your questions i enjoyed answering them and i hope you enjoyed hearing these answers of mine i know Sue's did so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and until my next video happy reading